Over the last couple of weeks, some friends of my wife have been bugging us to take them out to this agricultural museum out in the country. They're a family much like ourselves, a husband and a wife with two small children. Their son and my son were actually born on the exact same day. My son can't speak much Chinese, and their son can't speak much English, but the two of them get on well. The father recently had an opportunity to come work for the Queensland government, on some sort of exchange I believe, so they took the plunge and moved to Australia. Anyway, as I said, they had been uh, pestering us for the last few weeks to take them to this agricultural museum, which is maybe a 45-minute drive away. I finally gave in and told my wife that we could go on Sunday yesterday. It's the school holidays after all, so I thought maybe the kids would enjoy it. My wife asked them what time they would like to meet, and they said 9 o'clock in the morning would be fine. Because we live on opposite sides of town, to make it easy on them, we offered to meet them at a McDonald's car park on the outskirts of the city, where we could head out together. This McDonald's is much closer to their house than it is ours, but as I said, I was trying to make it easy on them. Yesterday morning came, and we were racing around trying to get the kids ready. I knew we had to leave by 8.30 to get to the McDonald's by 9 o'clock. But if I have one special skill, it's getting people ready on time. We arrived at exactly 8.59am. I felt good as I normally do when I execute a perfect plan. But guess what happened? They weren't there. We waited for around 5 minutes, but still hadn't heard anything from them. My wife sent them a message telling them that we had already arrived, but still no response. It wasn't until 9.15 that they finally decided to reply. They said that their three-year-old daughter was just having breakfast, and they shouldn't be too much longer. Do you see what they did there? They essentially blamed their three-year-old daughter for them being late. I guess they thought we would be less upset if it was their innocent daughter having breakfast that was the reason for their lateness, rather than them sleeping in or whatever else really happened. Unsurprisingly, I started to get angry. I mean, I'd gone out of my way to organise this trip that they wanted to do. I didn't even really want to go. We managed to get our kids ready on time and travel the 30 minutes to the McDonald's and still arrive on time. They only had 10 minutes to travel. How could they possibly be late? Finally, they arrived at around 9.30, 30 minutes after they said they would be there. I was fuming. I didn't get angry with them, but I was fuming on the inside. We made our way out to the museum, and thanks to being late, we missed the first sheep shearing event. Anyway, I tried to settle down and just enjoy my day. I asked them if they wanted to go for a horse and cart ride, and they were very keen to do so. I told them the next one was at 11.45, so we should probably head over to the station now. They just said they wanted to get a couple of drinks from the car, and they'd be back shortly. I went over to get in line at the station with my two kids. We waited for about 15 minutes, and then we saw the horses approaching. Of course, the Chinese couple still hadn't returned from their car, and consequently, we missed the carriage. As expected, about two minutes later, they showed up, so we had to wait another half an hour in the hot sun for the next carriage. Again, I started to fume. We were doing all of this for them, and I felt like they were ruining my day. Anyway, it was time for lunch, so we went over and had some traditional Aussie fare, damper and tea, and so on. I knew that we had to finish lunch within about 30 minutes or so in order to catch the next sheep shearing event. My family ordered their lunch, and it literally took about one minute to come. The Chinese couple ordered their lunch, and it seemed like we were waiting for about 15 minutes before they got theirs. Of course, we ended up being late for the sheep shearing, and arrived just as they were finishing up. I continued to fume. And to top the day off, my son got poked in the eye by another kid and ended up in the medical bay. What a day. I started to think about all the anger I experienced during the day and who was to blame. At first, of course, I blamed the Chinese couple. It was their inconsiderate behaviour that was constantly thwarting my attempts to have fun. I started to think back to all the other times when I've arranged to meet people and similar things have gone wrong. It seems like every time I arrange something with any other member of the human race, I'm constantly disappointed. But yesterday, I had a bit of an epiphany. I stopped blaming the Chinese couple, and realised it was my own fault. The reason I was feeling upset was not because of them, but because of my own expectations. I expected them to be on time. I expected them to rush to their car to get their kids' drinks and hurry back. I expected their lunch to arrive early. I expected to see the sheep shearing event. I expected for my son not to be injured. It was my expectations that led to my suffering. 
And that's exactly what Buddhism teaches. I'm not a Buddhist, but I understand exactly what they mean. If we constantly go into every situation with an expectation that things will go a particular way, then we will forever be disappointed. Things don't go as we plan, because that's not how life works. If I'm out bird watching and a bird doesn't come, do I get angry at the birds? Do I shout out, you stupid birds, why aren't you coming? No, of course not. But yet, I put these ridiculous expectations on how people should act towards me, and what happens in the end? I get upset. I get angry. Expectations only hurt myself. As Buddhists say, desire is the root of all suffering, and expectations are simply a desire for things to go a particular way. I can't change how other people will act. I can only change how I react. If I'm forever expecting people to act in a certain way, well, I'm forever going to be disappointed. Just as animals don't act how I expect them to, nor do people. For me to think that they should is naive at best. So from yesterday afternoon, I decided to try my best to stop letting these things get to me all the time. To stop having these constant expectations on how I think people should act. Expectations lead to suffering. I'm only hurting myself by having them. When we buy a rock melon, we shouldn't expect it to be delicious or otherwise. If we bite into it and it tastes nice, we should enjoy the moment. If we bite into it and it tastes awful, we should spit it out and move on. There's no reason for anger, and being angry at a rock melon isn't going to do anything anyway. Mindfulness is the key. Living in the present moment and not constantly expecting a particular future. This will only bring sorrow. As Philip Moffat from Dharma Wisdom once wrote, Expectations assume a certain result and are future-based. They actually narrow your options, retard your imagination, and blind you to possibilities. They create pressure in your life and hold your present sense of well-being hostage to a future that may or may not happen. When you are controlled by your expectations, you are living a contingent life. You cannot be free in the present moment. You cannot be happy with a beautiful sunset or with a moment of warmth between you and another. Instead, every experience is interpreted in the context of an expected future. Can you feel how enslaving this is to you? It would be one thing if in fact you could control the future, but is that the case? I suspect not. To deny the truth of life is a fool's errand, and is costly to your well-being. I now truly believe that my anger and my anxiety stem from these expectations within myself. But that's not a bad thing, because guess what? I can control them. I can choose to get upset when somebody is late, or I can choose not to. I can choose to worry about a future that may or may not happen, or I can choose not to. But if I'm constantly expecting things to turn out a particular way, I'm setting myself up for failure. So why do it to myself? From today, I'm on a mission. I'm going to do my best to let go of all these expectations, to live in the moment, to practice mindfulness. Of course, I will stumble. Of course, I will make mistakes. I can't expect myself to be perfect. That's just another unrealistic expectation. It's just not worth being angry all the time. It doesn't help me. It doesn't help other people. It just leaves me in a constant state of anxiety. So it's time to let go.